All right, y'all. So tonight, we got a fun one, all right? So if you look on the handout there in front of you or on your chair or in the chair back in front of you, uh, the top of it says this, what are you scared of, all right? What are you scared of? It's a nice and easy question. So what I want to do is open it up to the floor. I've got some things, some common ones, some classic ones written down. Thank you, by the way. I've got some uh, common ones written down, but I want to hear from the crowd. What are things that you are scared of? Spiders. spiders. Classic. Same. Caleb, you can flex that you're not scared of spiders, all right? There you go. I respect it. Anybody else? What are you scared of? The ocean. The ocean. That's a good one. What you got? Hmm? Statues. Curious where that started from. There you go. Snakes. Yep. That's a good one. Anybody else scared of snakes? Shout out. Hate them. Anybody else? What are you scared of? There it is. Bennett coming in clutch. Said it beforehand. I laughed at it then. I'm laughing at it right now. Bennett says women. I respect it. Men. There you go. MJ says men. Sorry about it, Adam, but scared of men. Anybody else? The dark classic. Hey, sometimes I'm with you. All the time. All the time with you. Holes? Wow. Okay. I can get with it. Anybody else? Huh? Mold? Sorry about it. Mold. Old. Yeah. I'm scared of old. Old people. Yeah, yeah. Mold. That's real, though. I will say, uh, I, will, I will say that because Chloe's not here. She might listen later. But she's, I would say, scared of bacteria and germs. And then she would say, I'm not scared of bacteria and germs. I'm aware of bacteria and germs. I say, fair enough. But to me, she is scared of them. Anybody else say, same here, germaphobe, anybody, nobody? Let's go. I respect it. There you go. Anybody else? There you go. Let's go. Closet is not staying open at night. I respect it. Charles, what you got? Huh? The monster under the bed. That's a classic. Always real. Josh, pal, what you got? Disapp wow. Okay, so just real quick. All right, please, attention, everyone. We just went from lighthearted up here, people saying germs, snakes, spiders. Josh took us straight down to where we actually kind of need to be and said, he's scared of disappointing someone. That's real right there. That's real. Some people also would put that in the category of fear of failure. I definitely like heavily relate with that. I'm like, mm, if I'm not confident in that, a lot of me says, I don't even know if I want to start it. If I don't know, I can like thoroughly succeed in it. I don't even know if I want to like get near that, right? So this is kind of where we're headed tonight. I do want to read off some of the other ones that uh, are some popular people are scared of. So, of course, spiders, snakes. No one said storms, which is a shocker, but some people terrified of storms. I get that. Uh, how about who is scared of flying? Anybody scared of flying? Okay, we got the, the old popping in the ears. Not a fan. Not good. All right, this one also. Uh, who's scared of dentists? Anybody scared of a dentist? Shout out. My father-in-law is a dentist, so I can't be scared of him. He's a nice guy. Helps me out. I'll plug it. Glad Heart Dental in Grand Prairie. If you need some, if you need some dental work, there you go. Hey, some other ones. Uh, what are you scared of? Uh, I've even heard this from one of our very own public speaking. That's one to be scared of. I believe Adam mentioned that one time not long ago. Uh, hey, M yeah, MJ. Okay. There you go. Public speaking, that's one right there that definitely people can be afraid of. And then uh, a classic one that, again, I'm kind of surprised no one really said, but scared of death. Scared of what is like after life, right? And of course, everyone Christian is like, oh, I've said, no, 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 no. I've never been scared of that. That's not, I get that, but like, for real, there is that sense of like, whoa, hold on. You're telling me one day I'm not going to be here? There's a little bit of like a, that's weird, right? A little trippy, you could say. So those are some common fears that people have, right? And so sometimes you get this 
scared and fear, you put them together, like it's kind of like inter interchangeable in the way which we use them. So uh, I've got three points here up front. You'll see it in uh, the black text there in, on your page. Fears, first thing fears can do is fears can cripple you, all right? So of those things that we mentioned, fears can cripple you, okay? So what I mean by that, I don't mean literally like it is going to like break your leg, but I mean like especially mentally, it can make you feel like I cannot even function. I cannot move forward with whatever's ahead of me because I'm so fearful, right? There are some fears that are just so overwhelming, so heavy. I would even say that the fear of failure or the fear of disappointing someone, that kind of thing right there, is a crippling fear because it's so heavy. It's so overwhelming. It seems so hopeless that it is crippling. Like you can't even take steps forward, right? You're unable to take action. I would say uh, procrastination is often a result of being afraid to fail. I know for sure for me, not, I am not good at being like, oh, a task right here, right now in front of me, let me just get on that. Usually I'm like, okay, let me think through like how I could approach this entirely, make sure I can succeed and all this kind of stuff. So procrastination can be a result of being afraid to fail. It could be afraid uh, that you're gonna miss out on something. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna procrastinate and make sure nothing else is going on, right? So if I can have y'all listen up, please, that would be great. Fears can uh, make you miss out on something, right? These, whenever it's crippling you, it can make you miss out on what you actually want to do. So if there's like some friends that are hanging out, but you're afraid of what that interaction might look like, your fear of whatever might happen is going to cripple you. It's going to make you unable to move forward, right? And so the second point is this, fears can blind you, all right? Whenever you have fears that are destructive to you, it can literally like impair the way in which you can see forward into your life. If you're so afraid of what's going on right here, right now, you can't see forward. You can't see past tomorrow. You can't see past next week. You're so overwhelmed and scared of today that you are essentially effectively blind, right? You can't see into the future by any means. You can't imagine, you can't dream, you don't have hopes. It just feels like, mm-mm, I, I, I don't even have the capacity to go there, right? Fears can sometimes turn you so internal that you can't see, get this, even other people around you that are struggling or that are trying to help you out because you're so terrified of what's going on internally. You are blind to those around you. Does that make sense? You're kind of feeling this. You're kind of like, I've been there or I've seen this in someone else's life. So here's this third point, and it's this. Your fears determine your actions, all right? So your fears determine what you will or won't do, right? So again, if you fear heights, it's determining your actions. You're probably not going to Six Flags. You're probably not going to ride the old Texas giant. You're probably not going to go and fly. Anybody? Fear of heights? Anybody? There it is. A couple people. I can respect it. Definitely have fallen under that category from time to time. But same thing. If you fear public speaking, you are going to make sure to stay out of the spotlight. You're going to make sure that I am not going to be anywhere near whatever action might be going on because I'm afraid I might be put on the spot. It is determining your actions. Is that making sense? If you are fearing risk or failure, you will probably live a very safe, reserved, like I'm not going to try anything that I don't thoroughly know because I'm afraid I might fail at it, right? It's determining your actions based on what you're scared of and what you fear. Does that make sense? So I think it's important for us. That's why I'm trying to like say, hey, what are people scared of here, right? Because whenever you know what you are scared of, then you're able to be like, okay, that's what I need to address in my life. I need to address those things that I'm scared of. And then what do I fear, right? So here's the next question right here. Is all fear bad? So before everyone answers that question all at the same time, 
I'm going to work us through this little topic right here, this little idea of fear. Is all fear bad is my question. I think it's very popular today to be like, oh, man, I'm fearless. Like, I don't fear anything. I'm like, no fear, all this kind of stuff. I get it. And that's nice that people want to be like hardcore and big time and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it's that idea of like, oh, that person, they have so many fears. They are a weak person because they are fearful. Is that always true? Just because you fear, does that mean you're weak or bad or not enough or anything like that? I would say no, right? No, just because you have fears of things does not mean you're weak, does not mean you are bad or anything like that. And I'm not just trying to gas you up. I'm not just trying to be like, hey, you should be scared of everything, actually. You shouldn't have any confidence. No, obviously that's not the point. But there is such thing as destructive fear and constructive fear, all right? Fear that tears down or fear that builds up. Does that make sense right there? There's a fear that can help you and a fear that can hinder you, okay? So here's an example of constructive fears. If you are fearing bears because you know a bear has a lot of strength, yes, you know that sucker is not like, hey, let me just come give you a big old hug, but it's like, hey, let me come kill you, you know? That's what a bear does. So what you're going to do is you're saying, hey, I have a fear, a healthy fear, an understanding, a, you could even say respect, or a reverence for the strength of a bear. I'm not just going to be going to stroll around the woods of Alaska and be like, hey, how's it going? I'm going to just like maybe get attacked by a bear. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? So that's a constructive fear that you are not going to do that. But a destructive fear of bears would be where you're like, I'm never going outside because outside is bears. So I'm not. I'm staying inside, you know? That would be destructive. That would be a ridiculous fear. That would be a fear that would even blind you, you could say, or cripple you and determine your actions, you know what I'm saying? So also another constructive fear, obviously fire. Fire. You should fear, have an understanding, a respect, a reverence for the strength and power of fire because no one, whenever you've got a fire out in the backyard or you're at a bonfire or something like that, no one's like, let me just go stroll right on into this thing because that's obviously going to hurt you, right? So you're going to say, hey, I'm not going to go stand in the fire, but I'm going to be by the fire still. That would be a constructive fear. That is wisdom. That is like, I understand what's going on. So here's how I relate to it. Again, destructive fear of fire would be like, I'm not going to use electricity because electricity might start fires, which my house might catch on fire, and I don't like fires. And you're like, that's ridiculous, right? So that right there, again, those are examples of fear. Does that make sense? Fear leading to wisdom. Because of you understand the power, because you understand the consequences of an object, you're going, hey, I am now, with knowledge, going to act in this way. Does that make sense? So not all fear is bad. I'm not going to be like, preach a whole sermon like, hey, you should have no fears. You should just be like big time and a big shot and go into, you know, all the whatever hype and all this ridiculous stuff you hear everywhere. But I am going to say, hey, there actually should be, here we go, something you do fear. And there should be multiple things that we have a respect, a reverence for. And then here we go, straight on into the Bible talk, the phrase that everyone has heard and has heard explained a million different ways. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Okay? So this is a phrase that you see, get this, 66 times in the Bible, rather specifically of fear the Lord, those who fear the Lord, fear of God, you know, all this kind of stuff. Those phrases, you see that often. Some people, they get nervous around this because they're like, they see a generation like you, and it's a bunch of young ones who may not know everything about God. And they're like, well, I don't want to scare you off. So I'm going to be like, hey, it says fear God, but it doesn't actually mean to fear God. It just means like respect him. Just like put some respect on his name and like he's God. So we should like know that. And that's nice. And, and it's, I guess, good. I don't think the battery's not. All right. Anywho, fearing. All right, hold on. Get back to where I was. Yeah, fearing the Lord. It's not a thing to be like played down. 
Whenever we fear the Lord, it is something, again, it's been said in the Bible 66 times. 66 times. So this is not something that we play down because if it would say, hey, respect the Lord, that's what it would say. If that's what it meant, that's what it would say. But it says fear the Lord. So we need to now understand what does fearing the Lord mean? mean, right? Again, so whenever we see things repeated in the Bible multiple times, we know this is a weighty matter. We know this is something that like we need to tune into. We need to see what's going on. So I have a couple of verses that talk about the fear of the Lord, and I'm just going to read them out to you, right? So they're up here on the screen. It's a little small, but stick with me, right? It says this, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So it says, by fearing the Lord, Riches, honor, and life? You're like, hold on, prosperity gospel or something like that. No, this is straight out of the Bible. It says, hey, fear the Lord, riches, honor, and life. That's crazy. So this may be something we need to tune into. If riches and honor and life intrigue you at all, maybe we should like dial in here, right? The next one says this, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. This is Jesus speaking. He says, but rather fear him, that is God, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. What? You're not hearing that verse talked about a whole bunch. Like, hey, don't, he's not any, he's like not rude and he's not bad or anything. Like, look, it says fear the Lord and then says this is the power that he has. He can destroy both soul and body in hell. What in the world? So are we to be scared of God? Let's continue on. Proverbs 1, 7, it says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you want to have knowledge, it says it's got to start with fearing the Lord. And the next one, it says, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider what great things he has done for you. That's from 1 Samuel. It says, only fear the Lord. Think about the things he's done in your life. Fear the Lord, right? Next one from Psalm 86 says this. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. To fear your name. That's what, that's what the psalmist is wanting. Hey, I want to fear your name. It's not like, show me that you're super kind and nice and that I don't have to fear you. No, this is we're supposed to fear the Lord, right? Psalm 128 says this, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. So if you want to be blessed, you want to walk in his ways, fear the Lord. We're going, hey, we should probably figure out what in the world does this mean? Because those are incredible things promised and put towards those who fear the Lord, right? So does this mean we're supposed to be scared of the Lord? No. Fear does not equal scared. Again, I can have a fear of a bear, but it doesn't mean I'm scared to go outside. It means I understand the power that they hold and I'm going to respect it and I'm not going to like go mess with it, right? Same thing with fire, right? I have an understanding, a respect, a reverence. I understand its power. Therefore, I'm not just going to go and flippantly mess with it, but I am going to have a healthy fear of it and understand what it's what it is used for in my life. You know what I'm saying? So that is again this thing of hey, we are to fear the Lord, but we must also understand his character. Okay, so fear the Lord repeated 66 times in the Bible. And then this next verse right here, this is Exodus 34, 6. We have fear the Lord because look at his authority. Look what he has the strength and power over and the strength and power to do. And then we get the character of God. So you have the authority, the power, and then you have who he is, how he interacts with us. So Exodus 34, 6, it says this, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. So yes, he has all authority. He has all power. But look at his character. This is how he has chosen to display himself to us. This is how he has chosen to interact with us, that we would know him as merciful. Not as, oh, you messed up one time. I'm going to destroy you. Although he has the power to do that, he is choosing to live graciously, connected graciously to us, long-suffering or patient, abounding in goodness and truth. Not like here's one drop, but it's so much you can't even like 
You can't take all of it in, the gracious and the, tr- the goodness and the truth that he has, right? So our three points for tonight are this. If you would turn it over on the back of your page, it's, it's there. First point is this. Yes, you need to fear the Lord. This is something we as believers must, I'm talking must, be about. I'm not even here saying, I've got all this figured out. I would say specifically in the last like 10 days, this has been something, I picked up a book and it really impacted me and I was like, wow, this book talking about the fear of God, this is something that we all, like everyone needs to understand. We all need to like be living this way, right? So yes, you need to fear. I'm talking like, wow, be in awe of the large majesty, strength, power of God. If you aren't doing that, most likely how you're viewing God is a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller than the last time you thought about him. Because you're not fearing, reverencing, respecting, understanding that he is the author He is the finisher. He is sovereign. He's the creator of literally everything. You look outside and you see the stars and you're like, God created that with his words? Incredible, right? So we are to fear God in the greatness that he has displayed himself in. However, while we understand the greatness and the power he has, we are to understand the character that he has shown to us. Merciful, gracious, long-suffering. So we fear him because the authority he has, but we relate to him because of the character that he has. Does that make sense? There's authority and there's character, right? So yes, you need to fear the Lord. We should fear his authority, not be scared of him because again, his character is good and gracious and patient. You think about this. If we had a king here in America, shout out, we have not kings, which is great. But thank you, July 4th coming up and all that stuff. Got to talk about it, you know, independence and all that. So, but if we were to have a king here in America, and if that king were to stroll into this door right here, we would all probably have a different um, way that we carried ourselves. Yes. If it's like this dude's got all the power and reign and authority in the land, if he wanted to sentence you to death, he could, and it would happen. The end, right? We would be like, I'm not probably going to be like joking around with this guy. I'm probably not going to make light of his presence. I'm probably going to have a, ready for this, fear about his authority that he has. Doesn't mean we're scared of him, but I would say if this king were like some terribly cruel king, we also probably would relate very different to him. We would would be fearful of his authority and scared of his character, right? So think of this, if this king strolls in, and he's a goofy dude, and he's like done nothing good ever, you would like probably be like, hey, we're making light of your character, and you're really not all that intimidating, so we don't really fear you. However, think if there's a king who has all power, all authority, all reign, all rule, and he has displayed it time and time again, and he's good, and he's patient, and he's like, hey, you, I know exactly what's going on in your life. How are you doing? I want to help you. I want to care for you. You'd be going, whoa, this king is incredible. So what I think has happened most often in this generation is we think of God as, hey, he sent Jesus. He's a good old pal to us. He doesn't want you to be anxious. He doesn't want you to be depressed. He wants to give you a hug. The end. And it's like, what a cool guy, I guess, you know. There's not much like Look at the power that this king has. You see Jesus as a friend, which he is, but Jesus as a king has been like lost. So what I want to do through this is say, look, Jesus is the king. He is the one who has all rule, reign, and authority. He is the one who literally defeated death. Who does that? Jesus does, right? He's the only one to do that. He is the one who can heal any sickness. He's the one who created everything with God, right? So yes, we need to fear the Lord. We don't need to just treat him like he's a good old pal and hey, you know, we're just having a good time talking about Jesus and all this. But no, like God is, is great. He's, he's 
incredible. He is like awe-inspiring. He is the one who has created everything. He's sovereign, and he's chosen to display himself to us in a way in which is good, loving, and perfect, right? So yes, you need to fear the Lord. And then the next one is this, point two, your relationship with God grows according to how much you fear him or how you fear him, right? Your relationship with God grows by that. If you do not have a great fear of God or a reverence and respect of God, you're probably not taking it all that serious. You're probably saying, he's just one of the boys. He's just here to hang with us. He's just a nice guy. He's like a fun uncle or whatever, you know, something. It's not, come on. Jesus, the king, he's God. He's not just something to be made light. So as we fear him, not as we are scared of him, that's not what I'm saying. But as we reverence him and his name and what he has done, our relationship with him grows because it goes more and more amazing to us. Whenever we think of Jesus with all authority came to meet you where you are and change you into the person that he is. That's insane, right? Point three is this, and this is huge. You will hear God clearer when you fear him. If you do not have a fear of God, if you make light of God and how he works, even not, I'm not saying like if you're joking about it, but I'm saying if you don't take it serious that he actually is God, you're not going to hear him. But whenever you begin to see God and the way in which he is with the character he has, with the authority that he has, you're going to be in tune to hear God speak to you specifically in your life. So if you want to hear God, it has to begin with fearing him, right? So everyone who has been to camp knows how awesome and great it is. Oh, yeah, hey, I'm so, I feel so close to God and all that stuff. I would say the reason why is for a week straight, you're with a group of people who are lifting high Jesus' name, and you're with a group of people who are fearing the Lord, because you're hearing the great things that he's done through the Bible and these stories, and you're hearing with friends, and people are talking about the craziness in their life that's all gone on, and how God's met them there. That's what happens whenever you have a group of people who fear God together. You hear, you feel, you sense it. That doesn't mean we have to get to camp so that you can experience God. No. But you can experience God in your everyday life by reverencing his name by recalling what he has done, you can hear clearly from God, right? So I'm going to show some uh, things here on the screen. You'll see it at the bottom. It says the fear of the Lord, those who fear the Lord, and to those who fear the Lord, God fill in the blank. So in those boxes, what I want you to do is I'm going to show right here. It says the fear of the Lord adds length to life. There's a verse with it. Teaches a person wisdom. I'm not saying write all these down. What I want you to do is I want you to pick just one of these. I want you to pick one that sticks out the most to you that says, the fear of the Lord adds length to life. Wow, that's crazy. If you've always had a fear, shout out, of dying young, doesn't mean all of a sudden you're not going to die young, but you're going to say, God, I believe that by me reverencing you and the wisdom you're going to give me, as I reverence you, I believe you're going to add length to my life. Or the fear of the Lord teaches a person wisdom, like we talked about. The fear of the Lord enables a person to avoid evil. Wow, that's crazy. If you're like, man, I'm stuck in sin always. I'm always around bad things that I don't want to be around. Maybe it's time to start actually fearing the Lord and you will avoid evil. Not my words, that's God's words. The fear of the Lord leads to life. The fear of the Lord brings wealth and honor in life. So I hope you wrote one of those down. This next one, it says, those who fear the Lord, all right? Those who fear the Lord. Here's a different set, right? So it says, those who fear the Lord, this is what their life looks like. Again, I want you to write down one that sticks out the most to you on the screen. For those who fear the Lord, they have a secure fortress and a refuge for their children. Wow. I'll say, as a parent now, shout out to the dad hat. That one right there just hits me like Amen. square in the chest. I'm like, whew, I want to fear the Lord for that right there. 
Those who fear the Lord have a secure fortress and a refuge for their children. Those who fear the Lord are blessed. Wow. Those who fear the Lord are to be praised. Wow. Those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Wow. That's crazy. That is insane that God would do such a thing for people, right? So I hope you wrote one down there. And then the last one is this. To those who fear the Lord, God does this action, all right? So this last one. To those who fear the Lord, God confides in them. Wow. To those who fear the Lord, God makes his covenant known to them. You're saying, man, I just, I don't know. I feel like I don't know what God thinks of me and all this stuff. To those who fear the Lord, God makes it known to them, his covenant, right? To those who fear the Lord, God has his eyes on them. If you're always saying, I don't feel seen, when you begin to fear the Lord, you know God has his eyes on you. To those who fear the Lord, God has compassion on them. To those who fear the Lord, God loves them. What an incredible promise. To those who fear the Lord, God sends his righteousness to them. To those who fear the Lord, God delights in them. If you say, I feel like God's always out to get me. I feel like I never know if I have peace with God. This last one right here, delights in you as an individual. As you fear the Lord, those things start to play out in your life and you get to claim those things and saying, hey, I'm doing this, therefore I know God has his eyes on me. I'm reverencing the Lord. I know God's covenant with me, right? So uh, we're not going to do discussion groups tonight. It is 7.52 after all. If we start discussion groups, it might be 8 when we're done. You know what I'm saying? However, I want you to take this home. I don't want you to just go right over there and toss it right in the trash can. I want you to fold it up, put it in your pocket because those verses right there, that is like absolute gold. That is God's word written specifically for us, his people, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray and then we'll head out, right? If you want to play some games, hang out, all that kind of stuff, you can. But I hope tonight through all this, you have a greater understanding of what fearing the Lord is, right? Because I don't want you to just think, be scared of the Lord. That's not what it is, right? But to fear him, reverence him, respect him, and look at how your life changed whenever you know the authority of God. Not just good old, here's my pal, but this is my creator. This is my savior. This is the sovereign God who has chosen me, who is gracious to me, who is faithful to me who has shown his loving kindness to me. That's incredible, right? So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get out of here. Lord, thank you so much for displaying yourself in this way. God, I pray that the fear of you would increase in this place. Not that we would be scared of you, but that we would understand your authority, and we would be in absolute awe of your character you've displayed to us one who is sovereign, one who is ruler, one who the storms have to obey, one who heals the sick, one who casts out demons. Lord, I pray that these students know you as that and know you as the one who sent your son to die for us and pay for our sins. God, we thank you and we love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen.